First, I, I just want to say a, a quick thank you to Benjamin for hosting me here. Uh, I'm reading from a piece called Free. It's a book and it's a text. I refer to it as being a part folk song, part lecture. The reading will take between 25 and 27 minutes. Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> Dumb male, historical male, white male, perpetual male, relinquished male, tame male, stiff male, black male, thinking male, pernicious male, lonely male, powerful male, intoxicated male, skinny male, chatty male, queer male, poor male, vernacular male, obnoxious male, universal male, frantic male, singing male, trained male, pale male, good male, limping male, insipid male, quiet male, nefarious male, caring male, dominating male, useless male, unknowing male, bold male, body male, Bitter male, naked male, loving male, hairy male, clever male, detrimental male, Asian male, rural male, gay male, leading male, inferior male, domestic male, metro male, highly male, indigenous male, tempered male, fatherly male, angry male, sleeping male, straight male, oblivious male, working male, numb male. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. 40 degrees separate the genuine from the real. What is this place where 40 degrees interrogate mind, body, the epitomes, the glands, eyes? Here almonds float in the color of organic red berries yogurt, articulating the weight of a body, the language of a body, the shape of a body, the intentions of a body, which rings in sympathy with other close by bodies. It's 50 degrees in the sun, 10 in the shade, drenched, shivering, asserted, I try to dry. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. Free. Free. We have gone full circle and are now back at full bling. We have gone full circle and are now back at full bling. I have gone full circle and am now back at full bling. What is my status? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Up, 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 up. Up, 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 out, 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 out. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. Lack of language is the dominant feature of being taciturn. To be without language does not mean to be without presence, nor without ability and desire for communication. Something is understood without being stated. Tacit knowledge, as opposed to explicit knowledge, relies on an intrinsic comprehension, one that a subject carries primarily in the body and not in language. Explicit knowledge is words and reason in a Cartesian sense. The taciturn person might be without language, but not without a body. 
Building a body is personal. It is a project driven from within by way of control, will, scheming. It requires an understanding of the body, how it reacts and what it needs to achieve an enhanced presence. The augmented body is arguably the assimilation of an individual in its image and consequently a project in making oneself available to the other, to the social and therefore to history. Enhanced presence not by way of language but by way of body. In against ordinary language, the language of the body, Akka surrenders to the language of bodybuilding. As a result of not being able to engage it through her writing, she meets it by means of the body or the language of the body. This language comes into being twofold. First as a rejection of ordinary language, second out of needs, rhythms, demands imposed on the body by the body author. To build muscle, Acker says, happens by way of failure. Pushing a local area of the body, a muscle, to the point of failure allows the bodybuilder to lure it back into being, to be built beyond its previous capacity, its previous image. The language of the gym is one of counting, of keeping checks, one that aligns itself with breath, with the breathing body, prompting both constructive and deconstructive moves. To build muscle is a negation of positives and negatives by way of language, a language that is merely an extension of the body and of the bodybuilding project. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. In, 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 in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Push, 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 push. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. When forming in the imbroy, the digestive tract pushes through in the opposite direction to the function it later comes to serve. Consequently, the mouth and the anus have shared traits such as skin type, sensitivity, and shape. Let's think of God and nature like that, mind and body, left and right. Let's have them form a totality, not in a sense that they are one and the same, but that they together produce a whole. In musical terms, we call this a polyphony. Imagine this totality, this polyphony, to collapse and therefore split into separate parts. Quoting Deleuze, quoting Nietzsche, don't exchange the intensity for representation. What does it take to uphold an intensity? What does it take to not become representation? Does Deleuze and Nietzsche, both Deleuze and Nietzsche, are beholden to Spinoza when declaring this distinction? Intensity is formed from multiple parts like atoms or particles drawn into formation by a shared force. This force, this togetherness in flux is one way of thinking Spinoza's correlation between mind and body. For him, they are different, distinct in kind, insofar that they don't share properties, but they originate from the same source. They are the same source. They're always in the same time. They consequently perform the same act. They produce the same effect in two different languages as two different tools. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, there is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. 
back, spine, bum, leg, foot, toe, knee, leg, hip, belly, chest, shoulder, neck, head, eye, nose, mouth, chin, cheek, neck, shoulder, arm, elbow, hand, finger, ache, sweat, blush, eat, cope, sleep, work, share, shape, edit, govern, take, try, get, that, thing, that, sucks, un, every, thing. Down, 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 down. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. When defining decreation, Whale looks to destruction first. She understands that if we are prepared to accept there can be nothing, there can also be something. Whale's decreation makes something created pass into the uncreated, whereas destruction makes something created pass into nothingness. To contemplate nothingness, there needs to be something. Whale can only act if she does so in relation to something other, an idea, another body, a god. This relation to this other becomes a dedication, a nearness, a way to be in an idea, in another body, in a god. To be in something other to what one is, is to be undone through an act of decreation. Not destroyed, not nothing. To allow oneself to diminish, to change, to move is an act of being. Not nothing, never nothing. Imagine Whale's death as an extension of her practice. Not to make it purposeful, but to propose an example of what we might understand to be her relationship to the other. Whale's life as it is lived and documented through her work is a continuous act of undoing or decreation. A life lived in immediate proximity to something other is, by default, a life lived attempting to become more than one, more than oneself. To move beyond the self, to allow, and this is a willing deed, oneself to be in something other, perhaps even without knowing what that other is, is to partake in a greater body. The whale, this greater body, is God. God is always in everything. To be in God by way of her own death is a lucid consequence to her project. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. What name, what height, what depth, what line, what spine, what topic, what mind, what time, what language, what cure, what brand, what tan, what mask, what blood, what breath, what faint, what black, what life, what capture, what demise, what shame, what type, what weight, what fight, what notion, what token, what past, what whole, what troll, what edit, what dull. Someday, 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 I'll, I want to wear a starry, starry crown. Someday, some, some, someday, I want to lay down like God did on Sunday. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. Formative breathing takes place in the womb as oxygen and carbon dioxide flow through the placenta of which most goes through the heart and the baby's body. At birth, the baby's lungs are filled with fluid, 
the baby takes the first breath within 10 seconds after delivery. This breath sounds like a gasp as the newborn central nervous system reacts to the sudden change in temperature and environment. Once the baby takes the first breath, a number of changes occur in the infant's lungs and circulatory system. Increased oxygen in the lungs causes a decrease in blood flow resistance to the lungs. Blood flow resistance of the baby's blood vessels increases. Fluid drains or is absorbed from the respiratory system. The lungs inflate and begin working on their own, moving oxygen into the bloodstream and removing carbon dioxide by breathing out. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. Up, 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 up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Mother, mother, mother. Mother, 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 mother. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. What to fathom at the time, primordial memory, infinite scroll, the luxury of light and shadow. If you don't understand the difference between a Tesla plant and a work of art, you know nothing. If you don't appreciate the difference between a Tesla plant and a work of art, you know nothing. You might call your research observations, but if you don't understand the difference between a Tesla plant and a work of art, you know nothing. Primordial memory, infinite scroll, the luxury of light and shadow. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. The incorporeal version of a human being is a file or a map that keeps renewing in response to its behavior. What provokes updates of this file is the capture of your movement, your contribution, your actions, your mind, your body. They leave a trace, etc. It accumulates and your status is optimized, you perpetuate. Eventually this assimilated you will outperform the actual self and rather than breathing oxygen as fodder for your bodily upkeep, you are on an algorithmic drop. In his text, Breathing, Berardi concludes that philosophy must consciously forge concept for the atonement of the mind and body to the process of becoming nothingness. Poetry has to prepare our lungs to breathe at the rhythm of death. This is to remain persons with agency within an increasingly suffocating condition. Don't fight the lack of oxygen that constitutes the current environment. Don't try to restore the levels, rather learn consciously to breathe differently. And by doing so, forgo the inevitable oppression caused by the post-ethics project that is late capitalism. It doesn't care for us is his assessment, so we have to take care of ourselves. To breathe at the rhythm of death is not to succumb to death, but rather to become indeterminable subjects. One, 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 one. One, one. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. Presentation culture 
Representation culture, die for culture, pay for culture, fly by culture, shy sly culture, mainstream culture, same day culture, ape shit culture, cardboard culture, tame culture, lame culture, online culture, cult culture, cancel culture, shaky culture, nope culture, dope culture, makeup culture, faked up culture, veggie culture, slit culture, tight culture, bad culture, nup nup culture, sloppy culture, straight culture, touchy culture, trans culture, sweaty culture, work culture, feeble culture, sleepy culture, shappy culture, drone culture, spelt culture, Mickey Mouse culture, no such thing culture, wiki culture, sticky culture. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. When something genuinely new arrives, it does so without announcing its intention. To be new, it needs to lack an image, lack purpose. To find purpose is to position something in relation to something other, and by way of this proximity, develop reason. In between past and future, Rent makes the following observation. The appeal to thought arose in the odd in-between period, which sometimes asserts itself into historical time, where not only the later historians, but the actors and the witnesses, the living themselves, become aware of an interval in time which is altogether determined by things that are no longer and by things that are not yet. In history, these intervals have shown more than once that they may contain the moment of truth. Truth is a funny size. Under the current rain, it's also a fucked up size. A rent's articulation of this most fugitive notion might be as close as we get to a definition of what it takes to get to it or to handle it. A rent's outline of the main characteristics in the determination of a moment of truth reminds us that such a thing, both truth itself and the need to exert it, is an entirely human project one that always springs from the totality of the living themselves. There are fractions within this totality, there are orthodoxies within this totality, there is laziness, laziness and there is sweetness within this totality. But when the appeal to thought arises, it does so as a consequence of a blow to this very body itself, a body in all of its disparities, conflated limbs seeking balance, verbose neurons arguing their case. Truth is big right now, in the plural, in the mall, in the predatory, like this fall. The doctrines of the previous century are summoned by a new and in many respects unsolicited approach to the idea of truth, one favoring quantity over particularity, motion over code, buff over faint, body over mind, echo over arrow, shame over fruit, Course over slit, but over stilt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. In, 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 down. Down, 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 down. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. There is no future for sure. At what altitude do you ache? At what temperature do you sweat? What degree of humility makes you blush? I still don't know why I love you. Where do you eat? How does your stomach cope? How do you sleep? When do you work? I still don't know why I love you. Who shapes you? Who shares you? Who anticipates your cancer? I still don't know why I love you. Who edits your language? Who governs your body? How do you understand that thing that sucks on everything? I still don't know why I love you. Thank you.
Thank you.